Morning, church. Morning. I've just been told off because I'm five minutes late. And uh, morning, everyone online. Uh, I'm, I apologize to you as well for being late. And, uh, but it's good to be in God's house this morning, isn't it? It's good to be together. It's good to be able to come and worship God and exalt His name and magnify Him together. You know, um, there's something happens when God's people comes together. There is something happens when, when God's people gather together in unity to worship God and to exalt His name. Uh, you see, God comes in and inhabits the praises of His people. He comes and dwells amongst us by the Holy Spirit. And uh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning into, our, into, into the very center of everything that we do. We want, we want God to be the very center of everything that we do this morning, don't we? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence here this morning. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Lord, your word tells us that where two or three are gathered, there you are, right in the midst of them. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we take a moment just to take that in, what that means. <laughs> the God, the Holy Spirit is here this morning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Amen. Holy Spirit, we don't want to do, we don't want to have this meeting without you. In fact, Lord, we would just be a club. <laughs> but Lord, with you, with a living church. Amen. Lord, we're your people, born again by the, by the Spirit of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, that we, we are boldly invited to come into your throne room this morning. And Lord, don't let us stand outside as spectators. But Lord, let us enter boldly into your presence, into your courts with praise. Amen. Lord, into your courts with singing this morning. We exalt you. We magnify you. We lift you up in this place. Come and be on the throne of our meeting this morning. We pray and give everything to you, Lord, and ask, Lord, that you be exalted in our midst, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stand together and let's worship God in song this morning. Praise God. Join in. Blessed assurance, oh, Jesus is mine, and oh, what a fortress of oh, glory Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fullness of glory divine. And of salvation. Purchase of God. This, this is my story. Oh, this is my soul. This is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my soul. Raising my Savior. 
Sing, uh, we're going to sing that again in a minute. But I want to ask you this question. Have you got a story? Have you got a story how you met Jesus? And how Jesus met you? How that Jesus has changed and transformed your life? Because that means this is your story. And later on in the, in the service, we, we'll hear somebody sharing their story. But if you have found Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to say you have a story this morning. Thank you, God. you have a story worth telling. You have a story worth sharing. 
you have a story that can bring hope and life to other people. Amen? Amen. So let's sing this with, uh, with some gusto. I'm not sure what gusto means. I know what gusto means in Derbyshire. Not sure what it means in Romanian, Polish, you know, Indian, whatever. It might mean something completely different. With some energy and zeal, how's that? Yes. Okay. Amen. Oh, this is my story. Oh, this is my song. Oh, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Raising my Savior. Let's sing the last verse. Oh, the day Lord. Perfect submission. Oh, all is at rest. Oh, I am my Savior. Oh, I'm happy I'm blessed. Oh, watching and waiting. Looking above, oh, I'm filled with His goodness. Yes, I'm lost in His love, cause this, this is my story. This is my story. Oh, I have a song praising my Savior. Oh, all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, oh, this raising is my, my Savior. Savior, this is my story, oh, this is my story, this is my song, raising my Savior. This is my story. This is my song. This is my Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to God. be to God. Let's just lift we our praises together, you, Lord. the church. We magnify you. We give you praise, O oh Lord. <coughs> we lift our praises this morning to you. We give you praise all day long. Let's start this morning with praises in our heart. We give you thanks, O oh God. We give you praise, praise for your Jesus. salvation. There is we like give you Jesus. praise, Father, there for our Lord daily Jesus. food. Oh, Father, we give you praise, for, Father, for our security, for our you. peace, Lord. We we exalt for our forgiveness you. this morning. We, we give you praise, O oh God. Lord. We give you Father, praise, Almighty oh God. There is no one like you, O God. Receive our praise from our hearts this morning for all you have done. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord of kings, unto us. You never fail, you never change. And we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's not the inheritance of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. It's not the power, it's not a superstitious God beyond our mind blowing. Yes. Of your ways. Yes. Dwelling in the bodies, Lord. This is your temple. That's what Lord Paul described in his words. We've been blessed in every spiritual blessing. Yes. Amen. God, that's what Lord God, you would have been blown his mind. Holy Spirit, you inspired him to write it down. Thank you, Lord. God, this belongs to us, Lord. 
Yeah. Every spiritual blessing being you have well spoken of us, Lord. Thank you, God. Even before the foundation of the world, Thank you, you Lord. have seen us, Lord. Thank yes. you, Lord. This is beyond our understanding. Thank yes, you, God. Lord. That is who you are. Thank you, Lord. That is the God we serve. Amen. That is the God we profess. Amen. Through our life, this Ooh. is the story, Lord. Hallelujah. You, Lord. This is God, you have given us the opportunity to live Thank you, God. in this Thank you, God. Our Give you praise. To the people whom we meet, as Pastor Thank said, you, hope, God, the hope is not just temporal word, Lord. It is an eternal. Thank God, you, Lord. you have given us the eternal security. Thank you, God. God, you are seeing us holy children. Thank you, Lord. Lord, God, we have come down free. Thank you, God. Because Thank you. Showed us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Unconditional love through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Amen. Savior, our beloved, Amen. our high priest, Amen. our brother. Yes, Lord. God, Hallelujah. Lord. Thank Hallelujah. you, God. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. We exalt you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Give him a moment. Thank you, God. 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 Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He dwells within us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your holy name. What a privilege. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father.
last verse. Great is thy faithfulness. I don't foresee. I don't foresee. Thank you, God. Peace, Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and thine hope for tomorrow. Blessings, O Faithfulness. We give him praise. We praise. We give him praise. There is no God like you. Give him. Give you all the praise. You're a great God. Thank you, Jesus. You give life, you are heard, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Worship Him, worship Him.
our praise. Our hearts will shine. His breath in our lungs, isn't it? <laughs> Take a deep breath. Just breathe in. God's just giving you that breath. Thank you, Lord. He's just giving you that breath. Okay. That ability not only to breathe, but He's giving you that breath. Amen. You know, it's not the number of breaths you breathe, but it's what you do with the time that you have on earth. Okay, man. Amen. And uh, I, want us to, I want us to sing this again. Okay. And, um, and let's just let rip, okay, let, let's just, you know, just, just let your lungs, that breath that God has given you, let's use it to worship him this, this morning, Amen. shall we? Hallelujah. I want to say this afternoon in London, there'll be two teams stood on the terraces at Wembley, they'll be letting their breaths rip raw for Manchester United and, Man- and uh, Newcastle United, won't they? I want to say, we have something far more exciting to shout about and get excited about than a football team. Amen? Amen. Matthew, I hate to say it, but it's it's true. Matthew's a Manchester United supporter. But, uh, But it's true, we have got something far more incredible and exciting to shout about than they will have this afternoon. Yes. So come on, let's worship God as we sing this. Let's, let's just use the breath that we've got in our young lungs this morning to worship Him. Thanks, guys. You give love. You bring light to Every heart that is broken, ray are you. Lord. Let's sing that again. Come on. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You Every heart that is broken, great are you, Lord. Hallelujah, it's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. So we pour out our praise to you only. You, great are you, Lord. And all the earth, and all the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts Come on. will cry. Yeah, our hearts will cry. Oh,
we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise and joy. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. You only it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. Come on, let's lift our voices this morning. Let's just begin to begin to proclaim how great He is, how awesome is our God, how mighty is our God. Hallelujah, the Almighty God, the everlasting Father. Hallelujah, great is our God, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, the one who is our Redeemer, our Healer, our Deliverer. Great is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are worthy, Lord. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are our restorer. You are our restorer. Father, you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. There is no one like you. We give it all to you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. I love you, Lord. And I live. My voice to worship you, O my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what Jesus. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Hallelujah. For God so loved us. For God so loved us. For God so loved you. God so loved me. God so loved each and every person watching online this morning. God so loved you so very, very much that he sent his only begotten Son, to die upon a cross. Thank you, Lord. 
that we might know what it is to have our sins forgiven, to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, to be made right before God, to be able to come boldly before His throne this morning and exalt His name and magnify Him. Hallelujah. For God so loved us that He did that for us. Thank you, God. Give you praise. To reconcile man to thank God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to say thank you, thank mo- you this morning. Thank Just you say thank you. Me. Right where you are this thank morning. You, if you know Jesus, Jesus Christ you, Jesus. as your Lord and Savior, well, you know what I mean. Sins, you want to say thank you because He has, like he has done you such an incredible work source, upon the cross else. for each and every one of us and in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We say thank you, Lord, this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Please take your seats. And uh, wow. You know, just when we focus into what God has done for us, we can't help but, I can't help but get excited. You know what I mean? It's not because it's just something in me. It's the Spirit of God in, in me. You know, His Spirit calls to our spirit. He reminds us who we are. We're the children of the living God. Hallelujah. And uh, that's you this morning. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. And... Uh, are we having a baptism, guys? We are now. <laughs> no, we're just changing the platform ready for uh, uh, testimony time this morning. It's, it's okay, don't worry. There's a great big pool under there. That'll soak it down. Um, but if you're here for the first time this morning, we welcome you. And we trust you'll feel at home here this morning. We trust you'll sense the presence of God and not only God's people, but the presence of God here with us this morning. And, uh, you know, we welcome you here and trust you'll enjoy your time with us. But um, the most important thing for us is that not that you meet with us, but that you meet with God. And you find, uh, you find him this morning here. Uh, and are you ready, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yes. Brown? All right, okay. Um. Good morning, church. Oh, come on. You know me better than... We're in the house of God. We're alive and God loves us. And, and most of us, I think, know the Lord as our Lord. Know God as our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. So let's try again. Hello, church. Yeah. And hello, everybody online. Let's give them all a wave. Let's give them all a wave. Do you like the wardrobe today? The shirt is ironed courtesy of my beautiful wife who's watching. And the tie was done by my beautiful daughter. Um, Jada's got a bit of a cold, so she's staying home to make sure she's fit for school tomorrow. Okay, so, um, so yeah, thank you. And have, hello to everybody else online. Seriously, we love you online, family. We really do. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for... are staying in and a regular feature that we have is this is my story and we get a member of our church to come up and exactly that share their story there are three very simple questions the first of which I will ask and say what's your name and where are you from Stephen Cox and I'm from Newcastle way I way I oh bit of rivalry here bit of rivalry oh we we'll keep keep it calm though we're in the house of the Lord so we'll, we'll get on peacefully together, as the Bible says we should. As far as is possible, live at peace with one another. Why aye? Aye, aye. aye. All right then. So, so, good friend, thank you for that. So, second question. Uh, now, bearing in mind we've got 15 minutes, but what is your story, your journey from Newcastle to where you are now? Okay. 
Well, I was born in my grandma's house um, in High Heaton in Newcastle. Um, that's how it was done in those days. That most, most people had their children at home. Anybody here born at home? <clears throat> oh, a few. There we yeah, go. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, when I was just... Um, I'm trying to fit in just as many things I can praise the Lord about uh, through this life, rather than telling you all the other background story. But when I was just a few years old, um, I was in a lot of pain. My mum was really worried about me, so she took me to the, the doctors. He just said that, um, oh, it's wind. You just need to uh, give him this, and he'll be fine. Anyway, the pain went on for a few days, and eventually um, my grandma said, I'm taking him for a uh, second opinion. And it turned out that um, I'd got a blocked intestine. So I was rushed to the hospital and had some of my intestine removed and thankfully I'm here to tell the story. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Those of you that don't know, a blocked intestine is very, very serious. It is yes. literally life-threatening. It is. So if you don't get it sorted, yeah. You will die. You will. And we lived in Wall's End at the time, well, from um, about the age of one to six, I, th I believe. Uh, Wall's End is literally where the Roman Wall ends. Okay. Um, and my father found it difficult getting work in Newcastle, so he came down to Leicester, and he lived down here for about a year and a half, uh, took, took on two to three different jobs uh, to raise the money for a house. And eventually, um, me, my brother, and my sister, and obviously my mum, travelled down uh, in the night down to Leicester. I, I do remember I'm arriving. Sorry, sorry, go on, go on. Please continue, sorry. No, it's fine. So that was uh, all new. Um, later on, when I was um, seven... In our bedroom, the way we used to open the curtains was climb up on the windowsill and pull the curtains across. But unknown to me at that time, uh, my mum had left the window open. And I actually f fell out of the win bedroom window um, and was caught by my left foot <coughs> under the window. Or it could have been the curtain. I'm not sure what it was. But something was, hang was ha keeping me t onto that... Uh, we Can know. I just check how old were you at this I point? I was seven. Seven, yeah, yeah, okay, you said. And how old were you when you came down to Leicester from Newcastle? I was six. Six, okay, yeah. okay. Um, my mum rushed into the room a few times shouting, where are I, where are I, and I was shouting, here I, here I am. And she couldn't see me, of course. And then eventually she'd, she'd run outside and could see that I was hanging from the window and then came back in and pulled me in. And she yanked me in so, so hard, so quick, I said to her, blinking at mum, that hurt. Did you have to do it like that? <laughs> well, it's better than landing on the concrete below, isn't yes, it? Yes, indeed. Did she tell you off after she dragged you in? No, she didn't. Oh, you've got a great mum. <laughs> How many of us, when we've got into scrapes that are potentially very serious, yeah. and our parents get us in, and then they go, what did you do that for? It's like, I'd rather have fallen out the window. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very true. Um, I used to go to a school called uh, Ravenhurst, and um, at, f at first it was quite odd because obviously people just keep coming and running up to you and say, say something, and then run away laughing because obviously I spoke G Geordie. Uh, and I remember sitting um, at school, and it was in the, we were doing English, we were doing like the, the reading, and in those days, if it was your turn to read, you stood up. So I stands up. <coughs> and starts reading, and everybody's going, what, what, what's it going on about, what's, miss? And eventually the teacher said, okay, that's enough. And I said, I can't help it, miss, I'm a Geordie. And she says, I know what you are, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, went on to um, Win Stanley School which is, I loved Winston, it was a brilliant school that was. Um, unfortunately, my parents split up um, 
just as I finished Win Stanley and we went to Beaumont Lees. Um, we won't go into any of all that, but then after Beaumont Lees, which I thought was a rubbish school, quite honest. <laughs> it was, it was Any, miles... Anyone here go to Beaumont Lees? It oh. was miles, be, miles behind Win Stanley, I tell you. They, when I got there, they, were, they put me in the bottom class for some unknown reason for maths. And um, the his, history was they'd started on the Romans. I thought, flipping, I'd been doing the Second World War at Winston. Oh, <laughs> it was my a bit of a change. Bit of a change. Anyway, when I left school, I started uh, at Wills and Co. Display, which is just down Churchgate. Uh, that was a poster and ticket writing place, so I learned how to sign write and poster and ticket write. So I did all the posters for the cinemas and for um, hat shops, and all, well, mainly all the shops. Everybody know John Cheetles. We did all the signs in John Cheetles. So it was really good doing, doing the ones for the cinemas because um, we got free tickets when they used to drop off the posters, so that was good. Um, I did have um, a small motorbike at the time, uh, traveling backwards and forwards um, to home and, and work. And one night I was going home, and this was going through uh, Eddington, I think, and um, a, par a car pulled out in front of me, and I just hit the side of the car, went flying through the air, I don't know if you've ever been in a crash, but everything sort of goes in slow mode, doesn't it? And I was saying to myself, oh, here we go, this is the crash. So I was flying through the air, landed on the other side of the road, saw there was cars coming the other way, so I leapt up and jumped onto the pavement, so uh, without any bruises or anything. So that, that was pretty good. Praise God. So thank you, Lord. Um, I left Willsies and then went to the Science Centre in Lutterworth. That was uh, an amazing place, really. So, whereas before we were just doing posters and tickets and the signs uh, for like Braunst, not Braunsport, Brad Bradgate Park and things like that, now we were doing all sorts of things. So, I was airbrushing, sign writing. Um, dragsters and uh, lorries, um, motorbikes were getting their tanks all done and things like that. So it was really nice. Can, can I just interject there, Steve? Um, uh, and I'm, am I right in saying this, that our current church website, you'll have seen Steve's work even if you don't recognize it, because our current church website <coughs> is down to this man. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the, the flags and the, the leaf, posters all out, the flags, all outside, the all of that as you're walking in, down to this man. Round of applause, I think. Credit where credit's Very due. Much. So this is the history, this is the history of where all those things that we now benefit from started. Do continue, sir. Okay. So, um, I'd met my girlfriend, Diane, and um, it came to the point where we wanted to get married, we wanted a house, but at Science Centre I was um, a freelance artist and it's very difficult getting a mortgage when you're a freelancer. So, Kids, if you don't understand what freelance means, it means you don't have a regular job, you get a job, you do it, you get paid, but then you don't know where your next job's coming from, so it can be a bit scary sometimes, yeah. so if you don't understand what freelance means, it's not regular work, so if you don't have regular work, the bank will say, you don't have regular work, how can we give you money to buy a house? So that's what that means. Yeah, you have to, you have to show three years' worth of your income, that sort of thing. <coughs> so we wanted to uh, move back to Leicester and get, obviously, a proper job. <laughs> and I tried to get um, a sign writer's job in Leicester. I wrote off to lots of places, went to interviews and all the rest of it. It was just so hard work and in the end um, I gave it to the Lord I said I need a job Lord um, ASAP because we want to get married uh, can you find me a job and eventually um, I got offered a job in, a, in the warehouse at the British Shoe Corporation 
And I thought, oh, I'll just take any job just to get back into Leicester, just so we can get on with this process. But when I was um, being interviewed, they said, oh, you're a, um, a sign writer, aren't you? And I said, yes, I am. He says, oh, we need somebody like you in the design center. So um, I got marched all the way through the warehouse, which is a very long way, um, to the design center, and I did sort of like a, a test morning, and they liked what I did, so I got a, a full-time job uh, at British Shoe. So thank you, Lord. I just trusted him, and he got me the job. <clears throat> so we had our wedding um, we'd actually bought this church uh, at that time and the old church down in Rooting Road was, was going to be closed and we got offered the choice of being the first to be married here or the last to be in the old church and we chose the old church, because, uh, well, very, very many um, lovely memories down there. So we were the last in that church. And I had the keys and everything, so I opened it up. I put the fire on everything, because it was in, in January when we got man married. <laughs> so the church is gone, but the marriage remains. That's right, yeah. Amen, amen. So that's 43 years. Yep, give it up, give it up. That's unheard of in today's society, 43 years married. It is. Um, right, I had a much bigger bike this by this time. <clears throat> and unfortunately, we're going down the, the Narbour Road and come to a, a junction. The lorry in front of me wanted to turn right, so he sort of pulled over to the right-hand side of the road and indicating, so I went up the left-hand side of him, uh, only to be confronted by a car cutting across. So the lorry had flashed him to come across him and to turn off to the opposite direction. So I slammed the brakes on, <laughs> and the bike is like sliding down the road. <clears throat> and then I heard, as clear as day, this voice said, get off the bike now, or your knee will be crushed against the car. And instantly, I jumped off the bike. The bike continued down the road. I had me tumbling after it. The bike hit the car. And then, uh, luckily, I, I missed the car. But when I got, got up and um, picked the bike up, can you tell where the dent was in the tank? Right where my knee was. I don't, I don't know to this day really everything about this, what happened, but I do know that voice was as clear as day. Yeah. And it was an, instru an instruction from the Lord, yeah. get off or else you'll be injured. In fact, the, um, the driver of the car said, why, why did you jump off? It looked as if you might make it. <clears throat> you know, you might actually get to stop the bike. I said, there's no way, <laughs> no way I would have um, missed. So I, I got off. Amen. Anyway, the British Shoe was closing now. He hadn't been there for um, 16 years and had a wonderful time at British Shoe. It was an absolutely brilliant place to work for. But um, it was closing. It was making us all redundant. I'd already missed one big round of redundancies, whereas half of the studio had been taken out and uh, most of the designers had gone. And I was in charge of the studio there when um, they decided to close it. So I asked the Lord for a job. <laughs> and um, while we were going through the process of um, the redundancies, um, I got a phone call from the Apple Center in town. And They'd liked what I'd, I'd done with all of the equipment at the British U, because I introduced um, Apple computers, desktop publishing at the British U, and I knew the Apple guys uh, really well. 
They also knew that I was a lecturer at um, Leicester College teaching design and typography on Apple Mac computers. So they, they wanted me to be their official trainer. Um, so I went along for the interview and then hoped to see if I'd get the job. British U were really good because what they'd do is um, they would teach you how to write an application. And then they went through sort of like interviews, you know, mock interviews and things with you. And it was during one of those sessions that I got the phone call to say, you've got the job. <laughs> so that's a how ironic, how ironic. So Steve Jobs gave you a job. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Jobs was the head of Apple, if you don't know that. He's passed now. So that was, I was uh, brilliant. The Lord had come up trumps yet again for me. Um, I enjoyed it at Apple. It was very hard work, but um, my department seemed to be doing the best. Um, because Mainly, I think, because uh, if you came for training, uh, you had to pay up front. So companies would have their whole studio trained by myself, um, and they'd pay up front, so the money was there straight away. Um, I also used to teach um, the studios for all of the newspapers and magazines. I can't remember what, where it was now. But um, it was brilliant seeing all these guys who like, wrote uh, the motorcycle news magazine, things like that, because I was really into bikes. And they'd all turn up on their big Harleys and things that they were testing for the, for the week or whatever. So that was good. Um, Steve, you, you, uh, through your story, yeah. you've alluded to yeah. um, uh, perhaps a greater power in terms of different experiences in your life. Yeah. Um, if you could tell us more directly, more explicitly, what God means to you, and when, when do you think you first met him or became aware of him? Um, I think, funny enough, it's a story when I was probably about 10. Um, I was doing one of these potato cutouts. You know how you can make like a, a template, um, a stamp, if you like, a potato stamp. And I was cutting one of those, and um, I <laughs> nearly sliced my finger off. In fact, you can still see the scar now. Um, it sort of cut right through my finger into my nail, almost halfway through my finger, basically. Um, my dad says, right, we're going to have to take you to the hospital for that. That's, that's awful, that is. And he, he used to be um, an ambulance driver uh, in the army, so I think he, was, he knew what he was talking about. But um, I, be I begged him <laughs> not to go. And it was quite late, actually. So um, by the time my dad saw it, and um, he says, okay, then he says, if it's not stopped bleeding by tomorrow you're definitely going down to the hospital. That needs stitches. Anyway, all night, I didn't get to sleep. I was just praying to the Lord. I was saying, please God, please God, fix my finger. And the next, next day, my dad looked at her and he couldn't believe it. it. It stopped bleeding. It almost started healing again, you know? So I got let off. Oh, wow. <laughs> but that's my first sort of ask, really asking God, you know, to do something for me. or to, At 10. At 10, yeah. Did you hear that, youngsters? At 10. Yeah. A lot of the stories we've had, a common theme that's coming through, and we've had a few stories now, mm. is just how early in people's lives they either consciously or not consciously have been aware of just something in their lives. And, and they've either at the time recognized it as God or when they look back at their youth, at their younger days. They recognize it as God. So you're not too young to give your heart to Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Sorry, Steve. Carry Amen. on. Anyway, through um, teaching at college, 
after about a year and a half, I think it was, um, a lady told me about a company called Serigraphia in uh, Coventry, and they were struggling. And I was l looking for, um, to get back into doing design and artwork and that sort of thing, again, rather than doing the teaching more. Um, so I actually got an interview at Serigraphia, and unknown to me, I actually knew the director of the company. <laughs> Um, who I used to see at um, the British Shoe. So I got the job there, and then I went back to the Apples Centre just two weeks later um, to see my friends. And the, the Apple Centre was closed, and then they were all coming back from the pub, and I thought, hang on a minute, what, what time do you call this, guys? And they said, it's closing down. They're shutting this particular centre, so I just got out in time. Wow. 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 God's timing is perfect. It is. God's timing is perfect. So anyway, after I was at Serigraphia, which most people that I know of who worked there called it Sevi Gra Graveyard, actually. <laughs> it wasn't the best place to be, actually, to work. And I tried to get out of there very soon, and eventually I got another job at Greenshires. Um, what, what sort of time or year is this now in your journey? <clears throat> Cracky, we're talking about 25 years ago now. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So I was at Greenshires for 20 years, and my son actually, Matthew, he um, joined me at Greenshires as well, so it was really good driving to work together and uh, seeing each other every, every day, it was really good. And I, I became um, the studio manager at, for the design studio there. Another, oh, that's had its ups and downs, as jobs do, but um, most of the time I, I really liked it. I'd learnt lots of things there. I did more than just design, we, we learnt 3D, I, I introduced 3D there. I introduced uh, augmented reality there, which some of the younger ones probably know what that is. Um, it's got very advanced stuff, you know, things for uh, like companies like Next. We, we did loads of things for Next, Sainsbury's and uh, Marks and Spencer's, Tesco's, you name it, we, we did for it. Next, which is a Leicester company, I do believe. Yes, it is. Yeah, Next tried to get, get me to go there as well. So that's, could have been your next job. <laughs> Could have been. <laughs> but I didn't go. <laughs> yeah, we even did the launch of the um, PSP, which is Sony's handheld device. So we did all the, the units for that. We designed that. We beat all the London agencies for that. That's big. It is. That's big. And then um, I tried to retire or, or go down to a, a four-day week. Um, because my pension uh, from the British U kicked in at, at when I was 60. He doesn't look 60, does he? He's older than that now. He, doesn't, he, just, he still doesn't look 60. <laughs> uh, and they said, oh, yeah, we'd love, love to do that for you, Steve. Of course. I've just got to wait for this particular company to sign on the dotted line that they're, they're going to carry on work with us and that sort of thing. And this just went on and on for months. And by about... Um, September time, I'd had enough. So I asked my financial advisor, would I be able to re retire? And he looked at the figures and things like that, and he says, I don't know why he didn't retire earlier, he said. So, so it, it, instead of them keep trying to keep me on, and, then, and, and let me go down to just four day week, I decided to pack it in all together. So I'm now retired. Yeah which I've thoroughly enjoyed. So I've, I've learned how to do um, watercolour painting, which is, was a lot harder than I thought, because I, I used to paint uh, with oils when I was a teenager. And that's quite, quite forgiving, but uh, watercolours, you have to know what you're doing. But I really loved that. And with my 3D work, I've always been able to do um, 3D uh, jewellery, so do jewellery design and get that done in silver and things like that. 
I did my wife's um, bracelet. It's got um, stars and a shooting star, moon, and all that sort of thing on it. I, I, I that. saw that. I just, just very briefly, <clears throat> 3D printers. Yeah. It's the future. It, it, you know, you've got ordinary printers, and they print stuff on paper. That's 2D, yeah. You've got printers now. I, I, I didn't know this. You'll probably know it, but it blows me away. You've got printers that will actually print out... Uh, a whole component. It could be whatever you want it to be. A car component. You know, you need a new cylinder or something. Mm. You've got machines that'll actually print them out in whatever material you want it to. I think it's incredible. Yeah, it is. Including yeah. body parts, I hasten to add. Yes, body so parts next, as well. So if you need a new knee or a new hip, just <laughs> ask Steve, bring him the, bring him the instructions. Do, and they, do they do thinner bodies? Sorry? Do they do thinner bodies? Yes, yeah. <laughs> all, all sizes catered for. Oh, okay, okay, I'll get a thinner one. <laughs> Custom built. So that's what I, I've been doing. Um, and my daughter, um, Jordan, uh, she had uh, a baby girl we called Kira. Uh, that was a, a year ago. And um, so now I'm a grandpa looking after my daughter. Uh, Thursdays and Fridays. Okay, quick note there. Steve should have been doing this a month ago. He's telling his story yeah. a month ago, but he couldn't because... It's Kira's birthday. Oh, priorities. Her party. Priorities. So that's when I had to go. I've not told you um, how I came to know Jesus, have I? So... My girlfriend, who's now my wife, Diane, um, we were at my flat in Lutworth, and we were watching the news, and she saw something on the news, and she said, that's part of prophecy, that's part of something that's written in the Bible. And um, up in this, this time, she'd been a, um, a backslidden Christian, and whenever... Christianity was mentioned to me, it was, it's, well, it's just a religion, it's, you know, I used to take the, the mick out of it sometimes, there used to be a sticker on Marjorie's um, telephone, and it used to say, um, talk to Jesus on it, so, and I remember once picking up the handset and saying, what's, what's God's number then, and uh, you just think, people don't realize what they're saying, or they don't know Jesus at all, do they? They don't know God. They don't know what religion's about. And so mocking God is just, uh, it's just something that, you know, I, reg I regret saying then. But God got his hand on me, he knew. He knows everything about us, doesn't he? Yes, amen. Anyway, um, she started crying because of what was happening on the news and about this incident that was she believed it was to do with prophecy and she wanted to get back to Jesus you know give a heart back to the Lord and I asked her well how, how can I be a Christian then so she told me the prayer so we, we prayed together and um, that was when I came out to the Lord in 1978 1978. Yeah. Two years after the blistering summer. I know. Two years before we got married. So, having given your heart to the Lord then, yeah. um, what would you say to anybody listening, young or old, about the impact that God has had, or the difference, actually no, I changed that, the difference that God has made in your life since giving your heart to him? Uh, the difference, uh, I guess, is knowing that um, someone's looking after you, basically. The Lord does really care for you. Every aspect of your life, the Lord wants the very best for you, you know? So... I can't th really think how I changed because I was a nice person before as a Christian, you know. <laughs> I can't believe that. He is really such a, lo a lovely, as you can hear, gently spoken, mild-mannered, but he's a real good guy. 
and, up, and upright for God. Upright for God, first and foremost. Um, I guess I, well, I stopped swearing. Um, and I've never been one for drinking. I've never smoked. In fact, my dad said, if I ever catch you smoking, I'll kill you myself. So. No, I think he said it more like, if I ever catch you <laughs> smoking did. tubs, your life is not your own. You're right. That's, if I ever catch you smoking cigarettes, then you're dead. And that was with a cigarette in his hand. So. <laughs> <laughs> that would be do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think well, one of the things I wanted to do, I just want to do things for the Lord. So um, my service for the Lord has been, well, I spent 25 years um, as a son. Sunday school teacher and youth teacher. I've Anyone come up under Steve? Anybody? Anyone here? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Few hands. And Sam. Few hands. Yep. Young man at the back. That's your investment into the kingdom. Sure is. Um, I've been a, a deacon, so I was a deacon for three and a half years until um, my wife took took ill, so and I couldn't uh, do the duties of the deacons so well then, because back then. Um, deacons and elders visited the people in the church so um, I couldn't do that anymore I was also church secretary so I've done quite a bit you have you have at this new building there is something that I didn't do at the beginning that I want to do right now Go on which then. I normally do if we could all hold our hands out to Steve please everybody and we say God bless you, God bless you. we love you and we are on your side. And I'll leave the final closing comment, whatever you want to say, Steve, to you. Well, I'd, I'd like to say um, thank you to Marjorie, actually. Because when I became a Christian, um, and I was working at the British Shea, my wife, because um, she... She'd known the Lord for so long. She was miles ahead of me with scripture and things like that. I don't know what she was talking about half the time. So I just spent ages gobbling up the Bible, reading and reading and reading. And every um, lunchtime, I'd go to Marjorie's house. And she's at that. <laughs> Give us a wave, Marjorie. There we go. You can see that hand. Lovely, faithful lady. And those of you who join the prayer meeting every Thursday evening on Zoom, you'll see Marjorie again there. God bless you, Marjorie. Thank you for your faithfulness. God bless you. So I'd go to Marjorie's house and we'd pray and talk about the Bible, about Jesus. And that's basically how I sort of caught up, if you like. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give it up for Steve. <laughs> Thanks. You know, it's, um, it's incredible, isn't it? We all have a story, same as I said. We all have something to share about God's interaction with us. If we know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we, we have come into that knowledge of him and that, that, that sense of his care and his love and his, his, his desire for the best for us and I don't know I don't know your story and, and we have a story each month but the incredible thing is that that my story I remember, just as Steve was saying there um, when Steve had that accident and he heard that that little voice you know that voice that said if you don't get off the bike now you're going to crush your knee which would have completely I've changed probably Steve's ability to be able to do things. But when we were in Zimbabwe, um, you know, I was, I was driving uh, the car and going to sing at a, uh, an evening meeting. 
And, uh, and in Zimbabwe, you know, it's not that they don't have laws and rules and of the road like we do, because, it, I mean, it's an ex-British colony. Um, but you just got a little bit slack, blase, you know. You, you thought, well, there's not many cars on the road. You know, nobody puts the seatbelts on. Nobody changes the tires when they look worn out. Nobody changes the window screen when it's got crazy paving across the front of it. You know, he was, he was like that, you know. <laughs> In most African countries, I think. But um, So I'm, I'm driving, I've loaded the car up, I've got all my PA kit in the back, and I'm, I'm just going out of the town where we live, and, um, and I just hear this voice that, that clearly said seatbelt. And so I grab my seatbelt, and I put my seatbelt on. And, uh, and, and I thought, okay, yeah, I'll click my seatbelt. But I heard this, this voice, this internal voice of, of God's love. And, 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 and so I put this on, and, I, and, and literally four minutes later, um, I'm, I'm on the tar road. Um, there's difference between, in Africa, there's difference between a tar road and a non-tar road, yeah? If you're on a tar road... The potholes are only two meters deep. Yeah. If you if you're on a if you're on a side road, then it, it's like I used to call it the end time road. Because what could be shaken would be shaken. Yeah. And as you drove along, you drove your car like this. <laughs> yeah, you know. And uh, sorry, my cheeks wobbled then, are they are now. I've got, elephant, I've got elephant ears as well. But, um, but I'm driving along the tar road and I've just got to, uh, to the place where I can, I can speed up at 120 k's, which is about 75 miles an hour on the tar road. And uh, it's just dropping dust, so I put my lights on and I get to the top of the hill out of the town where I lived and suddenly this, this kudu runs out across the front of me. Now, kudu is about the size of a small horse, uh, which is a, it's a, it's a deer, if you like, but the size of a small horse with, with round, curly antlers. And this thing ran out the grass at the side of the road, tried to jump over the, headlight, the beams of the headlights, and the next thing I know, I wake up on the side of the road having passed out, having got to the place where uh, in, in Africa, in most African countries, because it rains, a, in, the, in the rainy season it rains, they have ditches at the side of the road that are about literally two meters deep. And I came to rest at the side of the road before the ditch. And I wake up, and there the whole window screen is, is smashed. Uh, my head is pinned between the roof and the door pillar. And, um, but had I have not listened to God and put my seatbelt on, I would have been dead. And you say, well, why didn't God stop the kudu? I don't know why God didn't stop the kudu. I think God maybe wanted me to have a testimony of God's love, his grace, his keeping power. The way that God intervenes in 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 our lives, the way that God is intimately acquainted with each one of us, the way that God puts his hand upon us and sometimes we don't even know it. The way that God keeps us and we, we don't even know it. The other week we're coming down, we're coming down to the prayer meeting on a Thursday night and we're in the outside lane of the M1 and, um, and the next thing, the brakes are red in front of us and Ali says they're stopping I says they know they're stopping but this guy behind me is not stopping and and so I had to gauge my braking and I came to rest and this guy did behind me but three cars in front of me there's a four car pile up and we we go round it we pull up and we help people to get out of the cars and just check everybody's safe um I want to say God travels with us and before us 
And friends, it's right to commit our journeys to God. You know, and when I had that accident, I broke my neck in, in, uh, in three places. Uh, from C3, uh, I had a break in, the, in, in, my, in my neck in, at C3. And, uh, but God has kept me. God has kept us. God's kept Steve. You know, Kadir, God's kept you. Kadir's testimony is great testimony. Marius, God's kept you. And we, we could go round this room of how God has intervened in people's lives. And children, if you, if, if let, me, let me say this, that I, I'm, I was pretty much like Steve. I didn't know, I didn't really, I weren't really a bad person at 15 when I found Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I was a bit of a rogue. Yeah. Um, you know, I like, my, my job was to make the class laugh. Yeah, that, that, was my, that was my job at school. Um, but really, I didn't know. I, I didn't, I went bad. But I found Jesus at the age of 15. And I'm saying this for you young people. And I'm now a little bit older. I'm 61. Um, but you know what? I have never regretted that decision. And I found out that Jesus... <laughs> Loved me for who I was. And from that moment on, I have journeyed with him for the rest of my life and I've never regretted one moment of that journey. Never. And God has been with us in the very deepest times and on the top of the mountains. But he's a faithful, faithful God as we sang earlier. And I said on Wednesday at our, friend, at our warm space, Jesus cares. Jesus cares. You see, Jesus cared enough When blind Bartimaeus cried out for Jesus to touch him. Jesus cared enough when the people had been there all day listening to the words that he spoke and he said, these folks are hungry. Anybody hungry here today? <laughs> and Jesus said to his disciples, let's feed them. And Jesus cared enough to break five loaves and two fishes and feed 5,000 people. Jesus cared enough that when he walked through a town and people would bring out their sick, that he would pray for them and, and, and healings and miracles would take place. Jesus cared enough that one day when he's walking into a village with his disciples, the one who is the life giver, the one who is the resurrection and the life, that coming towards him was a funeral of a woman who was a widow with her son who had died. And there he was, wrapped up. And Jesus stopped, the life giver. And Jesus just brought this young man back to life. And gave him back to his mother. You see, Jesus cares enough. And I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what you're facing in your life. I don't know what situation and circumstances you're facing. But I want, I want you to tell you this. If you reach out to Jesus with all of your heart, I want to say that his arms are already outstretched for you. Whatever you're facing, whatever situation, whatever circumstance you're going through, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that life doesn't have its issues. It does have its issues, but what I've found is that with Jesus, He walks through the issues with you. So this morning, 
We're not going to have the word because time's gone. But what I want, to, what I want you to take away from what Steve said this morning, what I've just shared, the worship we had this morning, is God is real. And God loves each and every one of us. Doesn't matter how young you are. Benny, God loves you. Yeah? You know, God loves you. God loves you, guys. God loves you. God loves you. God loves each and every one, every one of us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the way that you walk with us and clearly in Steve's life, Lord, you were there. And Lord, there are what I call eternal moments in our lives when sometimes we become more consciously aware of your presence than others. But Lord, you never leave us or forsake us. Lord, you're closer than any natural brother. Lord, you put your angels to guard around us and, and Lord, you, you, you minister to us through your angels in many ways. Unseen. Lord, your word tells us that at times we entertain angels without being aware of it. <laughs> and Lord, I pray that each and every one of us here, Lord God, would, would reach out to you wherever we find ourselves at this moment in time. Lord, we would reach out to you. If we need a savior, you're the savior. If we need a healer, you're the healer. Lord, if we need a job, you're Jehovah Jireh, the provider. Lord God, if, if, if Lord, we, Lord we, we're facing difficulties, Lord, in, in whatever way in our lives, Lord, help us to reach out to you and to find you to be closer, closer than any brother. We thank you for your love and your care for us. Amen. 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 I just want to uh, share a few things with you, if you can, please. Um, uh, yes, okay. Okay. <laughs> Right. Technology, eh? <laughs> um, this morning we've got uh, Andrew and Mary with us, Andrew and Mary Crawley. And Andrew are uh, relatives of Kathleen Stoney. Stoney. Um, and, and we uh, mentioned the old church down the road this morning. If you go to the bottom of Narborough Road, you'll see a church building there. I think it's a carpet shop now. Um, that used to furniture shop is it? That used to be where the church was, and uh, and Kathleen was there for many years, faithfully serving God, and then she moved out of uh, out of Leicester. Uh, but one of the things that she left in uh, will is that uh, could she have a service here at Elim? When she passed, when she went home to be with the Lord, and and uh, Kathleen went all home to be with the Lord at 100 years old, Amen. Well, that's good, isn't it? And um, and I'm going to say something very strange, right, at this moment in time. This will be the second person that I have buried from this fellowship as, who has gotten to be more than 100, and um, and uh, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to. Be able to serve the family and and just uh, sisters in the Lord who have, have faithfully served God for so many many years. Uh, so the funeral is here on Thursday at twelve forty-five. And please, if you're able to come along and support the family, um, uh, Andrew said this might be the smallest funeral that you've ever done. Okay. Well, uh, let me say that it doesn't matter whether we 
uh, we met Kathleen O'Notch's family. She's in the family. Okay. And if you can be here on Thursday to support the family and to be here, uh, the funeral's at, at 12 uh, 45, and then we're going to the crematorium after that. Uh, there is family that, that uh, live in Greece and in New Zealand who will be watching online, so uh, thank God for the technology that is available nowadays. Um, the other thing um, also is... Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, it looks like I've lost some of my notes here. Um, Betty, yes. It was Betty. I went to see Brian on uh, on Friday and had quite a good time with Brian. Uh, Brian, but uh, Betty uh, passed away at the beginning of last week, and uh, the funeral will be here. We've not set a date yet, um, but please, if you're able to get along to see Brian, um, go along and see him. We had a great time together, uh, but he's hurting. He's lost his partner of uh, over 50 years and, uh, and he's hurting and it'd be great if some of the fellowship should, can just get along, see him, go and sit with him, making a cup of tea. His son comes today who lives in Cyprus. Um, but just, just uh, let's gather around him at this time as he's, as he's lost his wife. Betty, uh, you know, I remember going to see him. She told me all about the... Um, the Chernobyl choir that came and sang at the church uh, and everything that went off there. Um, so let me encourage you to, to just get along there. Let's just pray for these two families, shall we? Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord God, that you do care. And Lord, your word tells us that you comfort those who mourn. Lord, we thank you for the lives of these two incredible women. Lord God, that, that uh, knew you as their Lord and Savior and, and served within the body of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for their lives. But Lord, we pray for their, uh, for their families right now. That Lord, you would touch them and bless them and comfort them and be with them. Lord, strengthen them, we pray. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And... Um, just to say, tomorrow, tomorrow we've got uh, uh, Tots Cafe at 10 till 12. If you've got a tot and you want somewhere to be tomorrow morning, let me say, come along. You'll, your children will have a great time, and you will. Uh, on Tuesday night, we uh, start our Bible study again uh, from the book of Hebrews. Dave is going to be sharing uh, over a few weeks from the book of Hebrews. And uh, we're going to call that Going Deeper on a Tuesday night because... Uh, the book of Hebrews is an incredible book and it'll be open before us to hear what God wants to say to us through that. On Wednesday we've got our warm space. Thanks for everybody that's coming along and supporting that. It's incredible to see so many people from the fellowship just coming to help. Um, and uh, we have over 60 people every Wednesday come along just into the warm space where we've given them food and drink and we get a share for 10 minutes with them about, uh, about God and, and whatever um, and, of course, we've got the food bank as well there. Um, on Thursday, we have our prayer meeting, as Delroy mentioned, at 7.30, uh, both here in the church and on Zoom. On Saturday, uh, the, uh, there's a conference in here, a Romanian conference. Uh, there's some speakers coming over from Romania, 2, 2 p.m. Everybody's invited. So whether you speak Romanian or not... Uh, as long as you understand English, because they can't translate into every language, uh, there'll be somebody that will translate into English uh, for you if you want to come along uh, on Saturday. But let's pray for, for that conference on Saturday for our Romanian uh, uh, congregation that, they, that you know the presence of God is there. It starts at 2 p.m. And as with every Romanian gathering, there's food at the end. And let me tell you, it's, it's great food. Yeah. I mean, I, I just pop, I popped in on Tuesday. Is it? Praise God. <laughs> I popped in on Tuesday and, uh, and I got offered some cake 
and some bits and pieces and this, that and the other. I refused most of it. I had a little bit of cake. Okay. My wife went at that moment in time. Okay. But on, that's on Saturday, two till, uh, two till half six. And then next, next Sunday, we've got Mark Greenwood with us again. And uh, so if you were here when Mark spoke the other week, Mark's with us again this, Saturday, this Sunday. Mark's a great communicator. He's Elim's uh, director of evangelism, but he's also with us on the 15th of March when we're having a men's curry night. And Mark's taking that. If you want to book in for the men's curry night, see my wife. Uh, we're going to have it here. We're going to, we're going to make the curries. And, uh, and it, you know, if you can give a gift towards it, that's fine. If you can't afford to give a gift, that's fine. But we just want as many men here as possible. Bring some friends along, guys. And uh, they'll have a great night. Uh, that's on the 15th. Let's stand together, shall we? Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we thank you that you're here, and that's the most important thing. Lord, and in the things that have been said and shared this morning, Lord, we see your interaction in our life. We see the way that you love and care for us. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, I pray for each person here this morning that, Lord, as I've said, that we might, we might come to know you continually in a deeper way. Lord, whatever situation and circumstances that people find themselves in, they'll reach out to you and find you to be faithful, to be constant, to be always there. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And give you his peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget our tithes and offerings at the front here with the offering bags. And uh, there's drinks and donuts and cakes and things through the door here. Please stop around and have some food with us. Uh, have a great week. Bless you. <laughs>